start recording and then I'll turn that off. So please join with me as we take a deep breath. You breathe in, hold it as long as you can and release our thanks to God, the creator. Take a deep breath in, hold it as long as you can and release our thanks to Jesus, our savior. Take a deep breath in, hold it as long as you can and release a deep breath of thanks to the Holy Spirit who is with us and among us today. The prelude is, my God, how wonderful thou art. Uh, please prepare yourselves for worship. Welcome to all. I invite you to rise if you'd like to or remain seated if that's more comfortable for you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. The hymn is just a closer walk with thee, just verses one and two. <laughs> Thank you. 
Please join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. God who answers prayer, we are blessed and humbled that you hear us when we call to you 
in our time of deepest longing. Receive our gratitude for your listening ear. Amen. Please be seated. And Kathy is at a retreat right now as the licensed slave ministers are at a retreat. So Chris. Thank you also for leading last week. You're welcome. The first reading this morning is from 1 Samuel, first chapter, beginning at the ninth verse. After they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow, O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. They rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived him for a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your victory. There is no holy one like the Lord. No one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who are full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life, brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked, wicked will perish in darkness. For not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversaries will be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. Holy wisdom, holy word. The Holy Gospel according to the first chapter of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowly state of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Indeed, his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his child Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The gospel of the Lord. Mm 
That's kind of the sermon when things don't work the way you expect them to. <laughs> but yeah, Eve and Lucy, come on over first. Um, so I'm going to have you guys be the teachers today. Okay. So here's a question. And we're going to ask the question to everybody else. Here's what I ask you guys. We're going to ask the question to everybody else. Can you guys look? I'm going to ask people to raise their hands if they've ever been happy ever. Okay. Ready? Do you think many people are going to raise their hands? <laughs> you do? Okay, let's see. Has anyone ever been happy? If you've been happy, please raise your hand. Oh my gosh. You're right. <coughs> nice job. Okay, get your hands back down. Um, has anyone, do you think, if I ask if people have been sad, do you think folks are going to put their hands up? If you've ever been sad, ever once in your life, can you write, oh, hey, Susan. Oh, my gosh. A lot of people. Wow. And put your hands down again. Uh, Susie just fixed something that I couldn't fix at all. So we're going to ask folks and say, have you ever said, wow, have you been surprised? Again, do you think anybody's ever been surprised? Oh, so not at all. Very wise. Okay, let's see. Has any if you've ever been surprised or said wow in a good or bad way? And you raise your hand up. You've ever been surprised. What do you think, Lucy? Is it some at all? Yeah, some people in the back are sitting on that. That's okay. So what we're gonna find out today, Eve, is that in all those different ways, there is someone called Hannah. You guys know that I know someone named Hannah, right? That's right, my daughter's name is Hannah. My daughter Hannah is named after the person that we just read about in the Bible. Because the name Hannah means blessed. Or the fact that God is with us all the time. And so we're going to walk around because you guys have been a blessing this week. So I want you to please come over here. Do you remember Mr. Ferris over here? Is he scary? Not so scary. <laughs> you notice he, uh, Lucy answered with my name. So I just want to come over here. Uh, for you guys, because you guys did you a beautiful, beautiful card, and that is a way of being a blessing. Do you know that you're a blessing to those people? You guys were a gift. Yeah. God gave you the ability to plant. Lucy, you were amazing at drawing. Louis, uh, Eve, God gave you the ability to dance and to wiggle, which makes the rest of us dance and wiggle. And Mr. Fair here needed some help wiggling. And he needed some encouragement from us. And so I uh, see here with you see Sanford with these two amazing little blessings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll shake first. He doesn't like it. Or not that time, I guess. Oh, he is scary. That's a good time. Oh, he's done with that. Okay. Lucy, are you okay to keep being a blessing? Okay, thank goodness. We have someone else who's going to have surgery come off the monitor, but a different time. And she's sitting over here, so we're going to walk over to Miss Andy uh, over here. And uh, uh, we're good. And Miss Andy, I'm just going to ask if we can pray together because sometimes, like Mr. Uh, Mr. Fair is really happy, right, that he's not in the hospital anymore. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, I won't mention the Phillies because that's a whole other thing. Yeah. But uh, sometimes it's a little scary before surgery. Well, I have people pray for me before I had surgery too, so we're gonna say a prayer for me. And who would you be? Yeah, to God. So well, dear God, please be with Miss Angie as she gets ready for surgery. Please be with her when she's scared. Please be with the doctors when they're doing the surgery. And please be with her in her healing. And help us to be there and encourage you too. In Jesus' name. Amen. And sometimes our tears say how much this means to us, right? Yeah. And so the story, did you hear that Hannah was crying too when she prayed? Yeah, because it was so important. Sometimes I do that too, okay? When something's really important, I am really excited, and I said, wow, something makes me really happy, or something makes me sad, or something makes me scared. Sometimes I cry too when I pray. And that's something that Hannah taught us today, that it's okay to do that. 
it's okay to not even be able to find the words. And it's important to be able to be together because we are a blessing together. So E, thank you for being a blessing. Lucy, thank you for being a blessing. And thank you for teaching all of us to try to be like you guys, to be a blessing to others in happy times, in sad times, in surprises, in all of these things. Yeah. Until uh, I graduated from here. Yeah, you can ask me questions. The school ball. You guys play pumpkin in the school ball. Wow, nice job. Yeah. 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 What a nice type super probably looks at the bottom of the top. Oh, maybe you guys will bring this in after the show us. We'll leave my crown, we'll do that. So that's okay. We'll do that. Thank you for praying together and being such an important part of this church. You know, Mr. Fair over here, he likes staples. I am glad that uh, blue works for me. Thank you for being together. And thank you for all the different ways that you bring art into our lives. And thanks for letting me pick on this. <laughs> That's only because I can run faster. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's So for those who would like to see that the whole passage in First Samuel, if you pull out your Pew Bible if you want to, it's on page 213 or at the beginning of First Samuel. And as I just said, there's a lot of surprising things going on here in First Samuel. We have uh, people that God has been talking to directly, and they feel threatened. They're scared. Um, I probably could have asked that question too, right? Have any of us ever been scared at any time in our life for any reason? There are a lot of people that are looking up in their Bible and don't have a free hand to put their hand up, but I'm seeing a head smile. Uh, it was a scary time. The people of Israel, they had, uh, had the exodus from Egypt and moved back into the promised land. But the challenge is that the Philistines, we know that the Philistines, uh, were also in the area. So this is not a new thing that there have been such a tremendous struggles and fears between the people in the promised land and the land of Israel and between those that are the, the Palestinian areas. This was long running. And the people of Israel decided, um, you know, we, we trust God, sort of, but we really trust our military more. And so they said, hey, God, we would like a king to lead us militarily. Because the judges have done a decent job, but we're really feeling threatened, and we just need a little more assurance. And so these people are asking God for a king. And God says, you know, if you ask for a king, the king's going to... Uh, ask for taxes from you. They say, that's okay. We still want a king. And the people say to God, we want a king to lead us. And God says, you know, if you do that, the king is going to expect things of you and may be like a dictator. And the people say, that's okay. And God says, you really don't want a king because sometimes the power goes to their head and they do some really awful things and they lead you away from me. And the people said, that's okay. We really want a king. And so this is a time of tremendous change and upheaval for the Israelite people. And they're looking around, and they do have a priest. And the wonderful thing that they have found of all times in their lives is that a life of faith is essential. For those of you that are in 1 Samuel, you'll see the first two chapters is a list of the names of people of Elkanah's family, generation after generation after generation after generation, who have worshipped together. Kind of neat on our anniversary as we're looking back to the generations that have worshipped together. They came together 
uh, to offer sacrifices, to give their donations. They came together to eat and to feast. As you heard the announcements, we are still doing that today. They came together to pray. They came together to praise for the things that they were thankful for, and they came together asking for help for the situations that they didn't know where to go or what to do or how to fix it. In all those ways, God is present. And so Hannah is in this family of people that are faithful and are active in their worship life that are coming together as a congregation. And she's got a problem. Her problem is that her deepest yearning is to have a child. And at the time, that was how uh, she would also be defined, uh, her role in the community. I recognize that can be really painful because there are some people that want kids and can't have kids. There are other people that would like to have kids and can't raise them. There's people that don't want to have kids and feel like uh, they're treated in a judgmental way. We have all those different things still going on today. For Hannah, her husband loved her very, very much. But she had trouble loving herself. She had trouble finding a place for herself. She went to God and she said, God, I really, really, really want a child. In fact, she was so upset that she had disordered eating. Remember, her husband said, you're not eating, you're not sleeping, you're weeping. Why are you so sad? And she said, because I have this deep yearning. He says, I love you. And she says, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> It wasn't everything. It didn't mean all of those different journeys. It didn't help uh, entirely to complete her. And so she went to God in prayer. And she did that during a high festival. Our Jewish uh, siblings right now are celebrating. They just completed Yom Kippur, the Rosh Hashanah, the Yom Kippur, the holiest uh, days of feasting and gathering, uh, uh, asking God for a new start and atonement for sins and giving a fresh start. That's the kind of gathering that Hannah was at. It's the kind of gathering that gives you a whole new beginning. And there was feasting. And there was drinking. In fact, there was so much that the priest thought that the next morning when Hannah came to pray that she was drunk. It's kind of rude to her, really. She was praying there, and he said, come on, move away. We don't need you doing that stuff here. And instead of just moving away and shuffling off, Hannah stood up straight and responded to the priest, which I appreciated very much. And she said, I'm not drunk, I'm praying. One would hope a priest would know the difference, but uh, as someone, as a clergy person, I sometimes get things really wrong and make judgments that I don't understand. And I appreciate the fact uh, that in this case, Hannah sets the priest straight. And when I get things wrong, I feel like when people mention that uh, to me too, and get me back on the right track. What was confusing for the priest is that Hannah's mouth was moving, but he couldn't hear anything. She was crying, but he couldn't understand why. Sometimes our prayers are that deep. Sometimes our prayers don't even have words. St. Paul writes about that too. Right? If our prayers are too deep for words, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. It's not something that just happens in the New Testament. It happens all throughout scriptures. God intercedes. And Hannah makes a promise which is also kind of a wow. Hannah promises God, if you give me a child, always dangerous to make it a harder deal with God, I think. But did you catch what she said? She said, if you give me a child, I'm going to give that child back to you. And she does. Not only does she give birth to a child, but she gives that child as soon as he's weaned, so he's like two or three years old, she gives him back to Eli the priest. That child, Samuel, grows up at the temple. She only sees him once a year. Pretty amazing for someone to pray and yearn for some part of their life so deeply and then give it entirely to God. I think that's why our final hymn today is of all the faithful women. Hannah is one of those faithful women. She is willing to leave her entire heart and soul in prayer, and she's willing to give her greatest longing, a child, right back to God in Thanksgiving, completely. Absolutely sacrificial giving. And God keeps God's promise. God not only gives her a child, but God gives a uh, Samuel's a really extraordinary uh, person in the Bible. Samuel ends up being both a prophet and a priest. 
He's also a bit of a military leader if you keep going and, and reading more at first and second Samuel. One of the amazing things that Samuel does is he hits some of the other kings. In fact, he's the one who anoints David. David's not supposed to be a king. David's a shepherd, right? He's the youngest kid. He wasn't supposed to be a king. But Saul's kids didn't do very well. Samuel's the one who was instrumental in replacing that leadership, the leadership that the people had asked for, finally gave the people of Israel good kings. For about 120 years, they had stability. Samuel was a big piece of that because Samuel listened to God, and Samuel followed God's lead. Not everybody does that, but Samuel did. And Samuel existed in part because of Hannah's faith and Hannah's sacrifice. So maybe we look around each other. What kind of prayers do we say? What kind of thanks do we give to God? How does God respond to those? It turns out, ultimately, that the kings that uh, Samuel identified and chose by God's direction were the ones that were direct descendants of Jesus. God was looking many, many, many generations in it. I know that some of the, the folks that are Native American in this country uh, have a process of, of discernment and decision-making that goes to seven generations. It seems like that's kind of what God is going to do. Always making promises, always looking forward, always being present, and in the middle of the helps and the thanks, there are a whole lot of wows. And so I am grateful for the ways that God continues to surprise us, both with people of faith, with people facing these longings, with people uh, praying, receiving the answer to prayer. And then God looks way ahead of us into the future. Do you think 250 years is a long time? That's nothing for God. God is already way ahead of us, fulfilling promises out of what we do today and how we interact. So may we continue to be faithful like that. May we continue to come together like that. May we continue to stand up uh, for needs and for necessary parts of our world together. And may we continue to be that body of Christ in the world. In Jesus' name. Amen.
I'd like to invite you to be seated, except for the folks that are going to be joining the congregation. So Mike and Lauren and Pat and Fritz and Chris and Philip and Callie, I invite you to come forward um, just on the, the same level right here. <laughs> Uh, all of us will have the opportunity to affirm our baptism together. Uh, the folks that are coming forward have desired to, to make more uh, official uh, active membership in the congregation. And just to be very clear, Pat and Fritz are already active members of St. Mark's and Burrsboro, and so are uh, joining us as associate members, folks that are, are active in the life of both congregations, but voting at, at St. Mark's. So I'm grateful for the ways that you're sharing and bringing us together uh, beyond the buildings. So Chris, I'm just going to ask you, you might be a little shy, so I'm just going to ask you to wave. This is Chris, Mosley. <laughs> and Callie, can you do likewise? Callie, now Mosley, right? Yes. Are we getting used to the new last name? <laughs> and uh, Philip Mosley is here, and Fritz Bauer is next. And Pat Bauer is next, and Mike Burkhart, uh, you've seen him around a little bit. And Lauren, you've also seen around Lauren Schwartz. Thank you for gathering us. All of us will have the opportunity to, to affirm our baptism together. So dear friends, as we gather here at the conclusion of this 250th anniversary of Ministries of Resign Speeds, we give thanks for the gift of baptism. We come before God to affirm our baptism in the body of Christ. And for some to join Giant Zion Spee's Lutheran Church as active members. I should say I goofed up yesterday and there was a person who wanted to join that I didn't uh, get it right. So if there's anyone that would like to join and I missed you, uh, you're welcome to come forward at this time. If not, uh, you're certainly able to, to wait for another time if you'd like uh, to make this public affirmation. I have introduced folks. Uh, yesterday, Robin Lutz and Jay Trexler uh, became members of this congregation. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished us in this community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism. Unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I ask us together as a whole congregation to profess our faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, confess the faith of the church. Do we renounce the devil, the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God and the ways of sin that draw us from God? If so, please answer with me. I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I should say, if it gets hard to stand, please feel free to sit on a chair so that you don't have to, to fall down. Together, we've made public profession of our faith, and I ask those who are joining uh, as the members of the congregation, but for all of us who continue to be active members of the congregation, do we intend to continue in the covenant God made with us in holy baptism, which is to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, please reply with me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, 
Together as a congregation, you promise to support and pray for one another, especially these new members of the congregation in our life in Christ. If so, please respond with me. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people, especially Chris and Callie, Philip and Fritz, Pat and Mike, Lauren, in all of us, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Please let us welcome and rejoice with these new members in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism, which we live out together in ministry as members of this congregation. Together, we will continue to give thanks and praise to God as we lovingly preach and teach the good news of Jesus to all the world through word, worship, and witness to all. A hope may it be so. Amen. If you'd like at this time, or as you come up for communion today, if you want to dip your fingers in the water to remember a baptism, you are welcome to do that. And so, Pat and Chris, this is your official certificate. Thank you. Uh, and actually, you might recognize this. This is made by John Henn. And this is a, a gift that he has given to me to be able to share with folks uh, that are here at Zen Foods. So, thank you very much. And I have these alphabetical that you guys are spending uh, as you need to. Mosley is over here together. So, Chris, thank you and welcome. These are crosses that are handmade uh, by a friend of mine that has been longer with me. Uh, but he does ask us to keep our faith going and moving forward. So, I'm so grateful. Uh, and Chris, so John, for my former congregation as well. You know, every time you guys come to church, you get a new certificate. <laughs> <laughs> One of the ways that we are church together in the body of Christ together is by praying together. This congregation is wonderful about praying together, and that's what we get to do now in this worship service, too. Challenged by God's word in Christ, we pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Please take a moment for your own prayers. Compassionate God, embolden the church to seek all who are lost, clothe those who are naked, and mend what is broken. May we be generous bearers of your eternal love, God of grace. Through our prayer. Sustaining God as we approach harvest time, we pray for farmers, field workers, and those who process crops. Help us to support those who have just lost their harvest to storms and floods. Keep us mindful of environmental threats to the nourishing food that feeds the world, God of grace. Through our prayer. Steadfast God, inspire world leaders to share resources and work collectively to end global poverty, starvation, and preventable disease. Direct us to seek justice with equity, that all may live in peace. God of grace. Loving God, we pray for those who are afflicted, tormented, grieving, oppressed, lonely, especially those we name out loud and in our hearts at this time. For those preparing for surgery, including Angie, those recovering for surgery, including Katie and Ken, Ned and uh, Eric as he prepares for surgery, for Shirley and Richard, 
for Joanne and Scott, for Lydia and John, Pat and David, for Robert, Paul, Dale, Marie, for Randy and John. We also pray for Bill, who's back in the hospital today. We pray for those with chronic conditions, including Samuel Garcia Alvarez, Joanne, Ruth, Scott, Max, for Sharon and Caitlin, for Tom and Tessa, Angie, Anna, and Sandy. We pray for Marianne and Kathy, for Linda, Andrea, for Sarah, Kathy, Terry, and Kelsey, for Rick and Stacy, for Angie, Alberta, Sue, Johnny, and Tammy. We pray for those who are homebound, including Alvin, Don and June, Bruce and Nancy, for Bill and Jan, for Lester, Mike, and Sherry. We thank you for being with Joan as she's getting situated in her new home, for Elizabeth, Carol, and Richard, for Floyd, Linda, and Randy. Lord God, please help us to be a comfort along with you to those that are in hospice and comfort care, including Elaine and Linda, John and Peter, Esther and Jimmy. We thank you for the pets in our lives, for their unconditional love and their presence. We thank you for being with those who are traveling. Lord, please be with those with specific prayers, including Karen and Billy, our friends and relatives in the Florida and the Southeast, those enduring house and barn fires, for Judy and Gloria, for Anthony and Antonio and Miranda, for people who have been and are afflicted with chronic illness, addiction, and pain, those with unknown medical problems and those waiting for tests and cures. We pray for justice and peace among nations, especially the Palestinian areas and Israel, Lebanon, Iran, Myanmar, and Iraq, and Haiti, Russia, and Ukraine, Kenya, Burkina Faso, Sudan, and South Sudan. Lord, bring an end to warfare, violence, and injustice. Teach us to live in peace with one another. Lift up those who live under oppression. Watch over those who flee their homes in search of safety and freedom. Please be with those dealing with the wake of hurricanes and typhoons and tornadoes. We thank you for Native Americans, this Indigenous Peoples Weekend, celebrating cultural identity through teaching events, worship, and for preservation and appreciation of Indigenous heritage. Lord, we also pray for teachers, librarians, nurses, bus drivers, custodians, aides, lunchroom staff, students, and families, all who are participating in schools and educational programs this season. Lord, we lift up those who've died, baby Max and Barbara, Dolly and Bentley, Levi and John, Ron and Bonnie, those we name in our hearts, at the anniversaries of deaths, and birthdays, and special days, including Jim. Please be with all those who are grieving, including the Fegleys and Frank and Maureen, Pastor Mark and his daughter Lisa, Tim and Anne, the Kimmers and Luckenbills, Kathy and the Stoltzfusses, Anna and all those who loved her cousin, people of Cape May, Dennis and Luann, or Susie and Earl. Lord, deliver the strength of your love and compassion to all who need it today. God of grace, you are our Generous God, we give thanks for the First Nations and tribes who inhabited this land, including the Lenape. We lament the harm done by colonialization. Call us to deeper appreciation and care for the languages, rituals, and history of all indigenous people. God of grace, you are our prayer. And thank you. God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for waking us up today. Thank you for the wedding of Philip and Callie and their uh, new marriage starting together. Thank you for all the harvest, the soybeans, tomatoes, corn, and squash. Thank you for volunteers generous with time, skills, and spirit. Be with those who are walking with the crop walk and those who are walking with the empty stroller walk this week. Please, Lord, continue to be with those that are doing disaster relief, both here in Antietam and also around uh, the country and the world with Lutheran disaster relief. Please bless the in-gathering at Christ Glenside today. Lord, thank you for the anniversaries of Katie and Mike, of Sandy and John, of Nick and Amanda. Thank you for the birthdays of Gary and Linda, of Beth and Roger, of Wendy, Eric, Tyler and Cindy. For those who've joined as active members of this congregation, for Fritz and Pat, for Mike and Robin, for Chris, Philip, and Callie, for Lauren and Jay. 
And thank you for the ongoing healing of Aubrey, Allison, Cody, and Lauren, of Alex and Bobby, of Crew and Nicholas, of Bill and Barb, Hannah and Janessa. Lord God, thank you for being among those who gathered at 6261 yesterday, including Chris and Ray and Jan. Thank you for being with the executive council of this congregation, Chris and Roger, Ray, Wendy, and Ken. And thank you for the lay Eucharistic visiting ministers who will be commissioned later this month, for Jan and Kathy, for Marianne and Anna, for Mary, Chris, Sandy, Susie, and all who share the message of God's love with others. Ever living God, we rejoice to be heirs of the eternal life made real in Jesus' death and resurrection. We give thanks for saints of all times and places, first and last, who still inspire us to faithful living. God of grace. Amen. To your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. And having prayed together, we greet one another with the sign of peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. He said, greet one another. Thank you. 
You know, there's a passage in First Corinthians about a cheerful giver. Uh, I think Eve's got it. Uh, thank you uh, for your cheerful giving of yourselves, of your talents, of your finances. Uh, please join me in prayer as we lift up these offerings and prepare for this meal. Please pray with me. Blessed are you, O oh God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another in all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Susie, we're going to go ahead a few slides to the words of institution. The next one. Thank you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink ye all of it. This is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together with confidence in the word our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You know, we should do this as a group more often. Sometimes when I say who wants to pray, everyone looks at their feet, right? And I even let's see, I'm so grateful for you. Thank 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 you.
We are blessed to all our welcome at the table. Thanks for taking care of your part.
Those who are online or might be listening later, the body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. And a blessing may you be filled with faith, hope, and love, and a lot of joy. And a blessing for us all. May the body and blood and blessing of Jesus Christ, God with us, strengthen us and keep us in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together. Oh God, through this meal, you have strengthened us and appointed us to be your servants. Send us to do good and to share our possessions with all in need. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We can pass that along, Susan. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless us and keep us and give us peace. Amen. Our concluding hymn is 419, and yes, it is verses 1, 4, and 2. Uh, you'll understand that when you see the words. If you're able to, I invite you to stand.
to find peace to love and serve our neighbors. Thanks be to God. Yes, we will. Please don't go yet. Please have a seat for the first seat. Joanne is making a mad dash over to the other church, so safe travels, Joanne, as you uh, go across town. Uh, before we go across town today, please, please, please do remember to sign up for all the different opportunities to eat together. Uh, please do continue the beautiful conversations that started with the passing of the peace. I hope we can keep uh, connecting with one another. Um, you're welcome to work on the puzzle if you choose to. Chris, are you leading the adult? Yes. Class, okay. So we do have the adult uh, education class follows worship. We'll be meeting out uh, in the parlor for that. A reminder, next week, um, we will have, uh, again, using the, the First Nations version of the Creed and the Lord's Prayer of the Scriptures, as uh, we welcome Pastor Johnson uh, to be our guest next weekend. So uh, please do be prepared for that as well. So thank you for being online. Uh, and you can watch how Marianne does. If you uh, check out the, the crop walk, there'll be some some uh, updates online there as well. I don't know if she's actually going to be on camera or not. I'm going to try to avoid it. You walk too fast um, to get caught on the camera. So I look forward to that. Um, you might have caught in the prayers today. I got a call yesterday. Uh, Bill Morgan did end up back at the hospital again. Um, so at this time, Jan just calls and she says, uh, your favorite guest is back in the hospital. <laughs> um, so please uh, keep them in Paris and you go into surgery as Katie and Mike are speaking and uh, continue to heal up. But uh, one thing that is not in the bulletin because it came a little bit later on, there is a care team meeting. That's worship music, that's the food ministry. Uh, all are welcome to that. It is Thursday, this Thursday at six at night. So if you're interested in being part of that, uh, please come. So we meet right out here in the parlor Thursday at six. It does look like there is an election day suit sale. Good. Okay. Uh, so if you'd like to make soup for election day, please make it one that brings people together. Maybe a nice gumbo or jambalaya so we can celebrate all the different ways that, that we live out our, our faith being active uh, voters in the community. So if you've got Mary Schwartz, it's right up here. If you're interested in making soup or baked veg, you're welcome to, to see Mary for that. Oh, and I'll be hot dogs too. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's going to be a smack shop. <laughs> well, that's so. It's a whole other week of, of eating together. So I look forward to to doing that. Um, council, of course, meets tomorrow. So there are uh, some of the reports are online. Um, the tentative work day at the cabin, I do not think is happening. If you wanted to, to come out and kick in, they should welcome to do so. Um, but that part, uh, as far as I know, uh, is not happening. Are there any other announcements that I've missed? Jan, yeah, yes. We'll need snacks for the next Sunday. Snacks for next Sunday. Thank you. So there is a, 
Thank you. Uh, so Jen is also collecting for people that want to make a donation ahead for the meal on recreation. Uh, you can do that with Jen. The sign-up sheets are right outside the church office, which is straight out of this, uh, this store right here. So you can sign up to eat uh, next week and the week after and to make food the week after that. So uh, please feel free to, to add your name liberally. Uh, there are opportunities for helping to set up for the anniversary luncheon and for the anniversary book. There we go. And so Jay and Robin, if you haven't met them, are in that picture with Carol and Marianne and myself. They're the members that joined the last night. And a picture of uh, Lucy and Eve is coming up soon too. Okay. Oh, okay. There will be ongoing opportunities to make uh, donations for the disaster relief for the hurricanes and the tornadoes. Also, if you wanted to do that on your own, look for disaster relief. It's nice to do that. Thank you so much uh, to those of you that participated in the food drive with the Harvest Home collection. That was taken to Freedoms and Only. There we go. Thank you so much, Chris and Beth, for leading worship last week. <laughs> and Joan is in her new residence. Her birthday is coming up next week. If you'd like to send her a card, she is doing well. And thank you very much uh, for the prayers from her church family. She misses us. She's going to try and get back to Joan on the phone while we don't have the, the Facebook interface. There we go. And there are the cards. From Lucy and Eve breaking up Penn's day. Nice job, Eve and Lucy. Thank you from Pastor Mark Brophy. Also, I know some of you were able to be at service uh, for Barbara, so thank you uh, for your ongoing support of uh, Pastor Mark and of Lisa. This is uh, most of the women. Uh, Anna and I stuck in the back. The picture for the women's retreat last weekend. Yeah, there was about 70 people uh, signed up for that retreat. Uh, yeah, that's me up on the higher ups. Anna got me up there again. <laughs> we had a great time once we together and uh, just being out there. And uh, Amanda says, thank you for the opportunity. Every year, uh, we sent her to the Paris Secretary Seminar. And that's a picture uh, of their group from this past week. Amanda has the arrow over on the, the far left side. You notice know, to say the dates and the signups. I think that's the next uh, couple slides. So this is saying that there are anniversary books available and there are samples outside of the scene. Volunteers are needed to set up and clean up for the, the meal. We've had a number of people set for it, so thank you very much for the folks that are already uh, set up and helping. Please do talk with Mary because that cleaning schedule is coming up on us quickly. Uh, Pet Blessing Reminder is Saturday, October 26th outside, so we do not have a regular Saturday service. We just have the Pet Blessing, uh, the brief service and nibbles. Nibbling food, by the way, not each other. Uh, Reformation Sunday, the Trivia Games, History, and Fellowship are first, and then worship, and then the meal following. Please do sign up for that. So get a good count. <laughs> Do 
just in case you didn't notice, we're having a meal for our anniversary. <laughs> so we want you to sign up and participate. Please do bring uh, bring friends. Bring people that aren't yet friends. We can meet each other. That would be a good opportunity. Uh, personal group, thank you for the ongoing uh, personals. And please see Willis Kabaki. Uh, we have, I know some other people would like to make things for uh, outside groups. And please see Willis for some more information about the Seafarer project. It says, I like acorns. Uh, it says the mouse, the squirrel says same. I like that they come up a little hat. <laughs> uh, thank you for, for waiting through the announcements. Thank you for being an active, uh, living part of the body of Christ. Uh, please do go in peace and have a wonderful week. Thanks be to God.